Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to show you how to take a photograph and turn it into a realistic looking oil painting. Now Photoshop has a great oil paint filter inside of it, but that alone is not really going to give you a really realistic looking oil painting. In fact, it's going to look like all the other paintings where people applied the oil paint filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks and things to make your photograph really look a lot more like a real oil painting. So by the way, I'm starting here with this photograph that I grabbed from Adobe Stock. Um, Adobe Stock is a great resource and a great place for you to grab photographs. If you're doing comps and layouts, you can grab the watermark version and use it for free. Now when you're ready to put it into a commercial project or create art out of it, you can license that image, it becomes a high resolution file and the watermarks removed. Check out the link underneath to grab 10 free images. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a duplicate of this layer. And the way to do that is to grab the layer and just drag it into the new layer icon. When you see that little hand release and now you have a copy of the layer. Now this enables me to apply all kinds of filters and different things to it and stack them up. But I want to keep an original photograph in the bottom uh, just for, for a number of reasons. One of the reasons I like to do it is even though I'm working non-destructively, I like to keep the original image in that file so it's always there when I go back uh, as a reference or whatever. Um, I can also use it to show a before and after for you. But also, sometimes I like to copy that photo later and use it to apply different types of effects. So it's always useful to have it there. So you'll notice I usually start by creating a new layer and that's why. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the oil paint filter. So we're going to go up under filters, which is where all the filters live. And then you're actually going to find it under the stylize menu. Now we go down here and we're going to oil paint. But before I apply this, you may see this grayed out. If it's grayed out, here's how you fix it. Just go under preferences and under preferences, you're going to see something called performance. And, um, you know, we can talk about all this in a separate tutorial. If you guys want to know, drop a comment and I'll explain all this stuff to you. Um, but make sure your GPU or graphics processor is turned on. If that's turned off, the oil paint filter will not work. Okay, so we're going to choose filter. And now we're going to go to our stylize and then we're going to choose our oil paint. Now by default, we can get a little bit of a preview here. Let me just move this up to the side slowly, get it out of your way. So when we open up the oil paint filter, the first thing we're going to see is this little effect up here and we can view it in there. We can zoom out so we can see a little bit more of the image or we can zoom into 100% to see how it's actually affecting it. Now, here's the thing, I'd love to see it on the picture. So we're just gonna click preview, and now that's gonna show it on the picture. It's gonna take a little bit longer for it to render in there than it will in this window, um, especially if you're working on a high resolution file, so you might have to be a little patient. So let's look at these basic sliders. So stylization, if we turn it all the way up, you see we're gonna get kind of longer kind of strokes there, and if we turn it down, it's gonna be shorter, more kind of detailed strokes. So depending on the effect you're looking for, you can do this. If we turn cleanliness all the way up, it's going to create a very kind of a smooth effect. See that? Versus turning cleanliness all the way down, it's going to be much more kind of uh, impressionistic. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up to about there because I like it a little bit more like that. And now scale. If we turn up scale, you're going to see this kind of um, texture or this detail is going to look a lot larger. Now, the thing about scale is this is going to change for image. If you're working on a high resolution photo, you're going to want to have the scale a lot higher than you would if you're working on a web resolution or a low res image. So we turn the scale down here. You can see uh, how it just kind of affects it. Now, the other thing is we've got bristle detail. So we want to have really detailed bristles on the brush or we can turn it down and you'll notice it'll become a lot softer. Now, one of the things that's really going to affect this image a lot here is lighting. I'm going to turn the lighting off for now. And notice that three-dimensional effect is gone. And that's what I want. I want to be able to create a kind of a stylized looking photo here. So I'm going to play around stylization a little bit till it gets to kind of the vicinity. I kind of like that, but watch out for the halos. You know, if we take it down a little bit lower, you're not going to see those halos as much. So let's bring it up just till they start to appear, because then once they appear, it starts to look very fake. And then we're just going to take it back a little bit. So we know there's no real noticeable halos on there. Cleanliness, let's play around with this until we get a nice kind of a brushed look without it getting too rough. So we don't want to like 
looked super rough like this, I want to just kind of smoothen that a little bit more because that's how I would paint if I was working with oil paints. Okay, that's looking good. So right now we're going to leave the scale and a bristle detail alone because we're not using lighting. When you're not using lighting, they're not really going to make much difference. But in a second, we will come back and we'll use that. Okay, so looking here, we've got a nice kind of basic effect there. So we're just going to click OK to apply it. And we can see there's the original photograph. And now here we go with our kind of effect that we're getting there. Now, I want to do a little bit more to this. So I'm going to take the background again and I'm going to hit Control J to make a copy of that. And we'll bring it up. And why don't we just call this one paint? Okay, so now we're going to work for the paint detail, but I'd like to get, you know, a slightly different effect with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the filter and we're going to go back to our stylize one more time. And we're going to apply oil paint again. Now we're going to turn on our lighting. Now I really care about, you know, how is this sort of affecting it here, this effect? Um, you know, we can play around with this so we can play around with the scale. You know, if we want to make this a little bit bigger or we want to make it smaller. You know, what kind of effect do you want? I want to go for kind of a, yeah, maybe around about here. Mm, a little much. Let's bring that down a little bit. Okay, so maybe that's looking sort of good. Watch out for these halos around those edges. Once again, bristle detail. Maybe we want a little more detail. So maybe I'm going to take the scale down so I don't get really obvious halos, but bring up the detail a little bit more. And notice here on the lighting too, we have this. You know, we can change the direction of the lighting. And of course the shine, you know, we can increase this so it looks more reflective or we can take it all the way down where it's not going to do anything. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Maybe to about there. You know what? And that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to apply this on top right now. So why did I create a new layer? Because I want to be able to play around with this and blend these two together. So let's just go all the way with the opacity. We're going to take it all the way down and we're just going to bring it up a little bit to about there. So now we're about a 50% opacity. And I just think that's giving a little bit more of a realistic result. Um, so that texture's there, but it's not overbearing or taking over the photograph. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it look like it's on canvas. So I want to create yet again, another copy of this photograph. So I'm just going to hit control J and actually make a copy of this particular layer we're working on right now. And we're going to apply the texture. So let's go under the filter. And under filter, we want to go to filter gallery. And under this filter gallery, what we want to do is we want to go to texture. And then we're going to go to the very last option, which is texturizer. Click that on there. And then for the options, we're going to choose canvas. Now, if you want to see what this looks like, we can actually just click and drag this window and increase the size of that window. And now we can get a good idea of what it's going to look like in a photograph. Now, remember, we can turn the opacity up or down. So what we want to work on is the scaling. If we go like this, it's going to be very, very big, thick canvas strips, very small here. So we can kind of control how much tooth we've got there on that canvas. And the relief, if we turn that up, see, it just gets more like that. And here it has no effect. So let's bring it up to about there. And that's not bad. We can change the light direction, all those kind of things if we want. Now we're going to click OK. And now we can see because we got this at 50% opacity because we copied the other layer, it's looking pretty good. If we wanted to make it stronger, of course, we could increase that opacity, but I'm kind of liking it maybe around there, maybe around 60 might look better. Let's have a look at the before and after. There's the before photograph and there's the after. We were able to take that photograph and make it look like an oil painting. Now it's all ready for you to print or do whatever you like with it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, smash that like button into dust. And by the way, I grabbed this image from Adobe Stock, so feel free to grab those 10 free images. The link is underneath from Adobe Stock, so you can start playing around with this. Um, I'll also add a link on the Photoshop Cafe page to this particular image, so you can grab this image from Adobe Stock and play around with it as well. So anyway, guys, uh, what do you think about this? Add a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, let me know what you'd love to learn next. Um, and until next time, I'll see you. Hang on a sec. And I just want to say too, thanks guys for all the congratulations. We just recently hit 100,000 subscribers. Check out the video on there too that I, we've got a little celebration we did. And thank you guys for all the nice comments um, and all the good feedback from that. I just really appreciate it. I'm feeling the love and I'm giving the love back to you. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.